I just want my gay babies to be safe and happy. <laughs> Hey, hey, it's Sarah. So, today we're out in the Australian bush. What am I doing here in this beautiful place? Well, recently I watched Hannah Witten's video on the Now Not Then tag, started by Sexplanations. And I thought I need to share the Australian perspective ASAP. I wasn't tagged in it because this is my very first YouTube video and I am freaking the fuck out, let me tell you. I'm here because I want to share with you guys the Australian perspective on the positive sex ed changes and sex, sexual health changes and positive sexual law changes that it has happened in Australia since 1992. So what is the tag? When we discuss sexual health, a lot of the things that we discuss are about negative sex negative things or things that have gone backwards but this tag started by Dr Lindsay Doe I'm gonna leave a link right here in the video you should also go and watch Hannah Witten's videos I realize that right now I probably only my friends and family are watching this and maybe some of you haven't heard of Hannah Witten and if all I do today is share that positive sex out of love <laughs> actually I'll be quite over the moon anyway I'm getting sidetracked this tag is to talk about sex positive changes that have happened in education, health and law. And I thought I was well suited to talk about that because I am a teacher, but I'm also currently studying my masters of sexology at Curtin University. If that confuses you, you can do research here. So another addition about the tag is to talk about the sex, positive sex ed changes that have happened in your area since you were born. It started at 92, baby. I'm so embarrassing. Number one. So as of January 2018, here in Australia, you can marry whoever you want. That is so exciting. It warms my heart that there's more love in this place. You could always do with more love. Everyone could always do with more love. So January 2018, we've had it for eight, 18 months. And do you know what? The world here hasn't fallen apart. It might be winter, but it's certainly still going on here in Australia, despite what the no campaign said. Now you might be wondering, no campaign, Sarah? Yes, my dear friends, strap yourselves in, get yourself a nice hot cup of tea because I am about to spill it and shit is hot and fucked up. Although we have this wonderful thing of everybody getting, being able to get married, we had to fight for it and that makes my heart sad it is a positive change but the way that it came about for me as an Australian was just heartbreaking <sighs> so yes we have this positive sex change but boy we had to fight tooth and nail for it and part of that part of that story is really really sad and disheartening let me take you back to 2017 so we had a Liberal government for everyone that's watching this video that's not from Australia, we have the Liberal Party and the Labor Party. As with other places, we have lots of other little parties, but let's be real, people are only, the only two parties that have been in government in Australia are the Liberal Party and the Labor Party. And at that time, the Liberal Party was in power, and it still is, which breaks my heart a little bit. Australia, what are you doing? What are you doing picking conservatives to rule us? Anyway, I digress. That is another story for another time. In 2017, our Prime Minister was this man. Now, I didn't mind him. Even though he's a conservative, I thought he was okay. And he was centre-right. And he was all for same-sex marriage. He wanted, I believe, I truly believe that he wanted to have same-sex marriage in Australia. And if he could have changed the law at that point in time, I think that we would have had it in 2017. But his party, the Liberal Party, was not down. Does that surprise you? So to keep everyone happy, they decided to run a postal plebiscite. Now, I can hear you all the way out in the middle of nowhere. Sarah, 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 what's a postal plebiscite? Girl, don't you worry, I got you. Having voted in one, I know what it is. To answer this, I'm going to give you 
the statement from the Australian Electoral Commission, who are the people that ran this glorified survey. On the Australian Electoral Commission website, a plebiscite is defined as... On, let me get this up. Ah, here. <coughs> Governments can hold plebiscites to test whether people either support or oppose a proposed action on an issue. The government is not bound by the result of the plebiscite and ministers do not have to vote as the constituents vote. Basically, basically, our representatives of us as Australian people, if they did not believe in same-sex marriage, they could vote no, even though the vote was 62% yes. They can vote no. What? I'll leave some links in the description, but there were so many surveys before this postal plebiscite that said Australia would vote yes. Yet our government still sent a glorified opinion poll through the post costing us $80 million. Our government still put that glorified opinion poll into the letterboxes of every Australian that is able to vote in 2017 at the detriment to the LGBTQI society just to please some conservatives. On the 15th of November 2017, the vote came back. It was 62% yes and 38% no. Australia had same-sex marriage and that is a positive thing. I am so happy that that is a thing that exists in our country right now. It makes me sad the way that we got it, but it's here and that's, a pos that's the positive from it all. The law didn't come into effect until January 2018 for some reason which I don't know about. I'm too angry about how we got it. All right, on to number two. This one is Australia's low rates of HIV. So, as we all know, the 1980s happened. This was recently published by the Kirby Institute at the University of New South Wales. Australia has one of the lowest HIV rates in Australia. In 2018, Australia had its lowest diagnosis rate of HIV. In 2018, there were only 835 new diagnoses. This is the lowest that it's been since 2001 to when it was its highest, which was five years before I was born, 1987. So in 1987, there were 2,412 new diagnoses. Diagnoses? Diagnoses? Diagnoses. The article, which I'll link here, attributes it to a few things. Number one being the use of PrEP, Australia-wide STI clinic testing, Australia-wide health campaigns and the addition of PrEP to the PBS or the pharma, pharma ugh, this is hard to say, the, pharmaceuti the pharmaceutical benefit scheme. Yes. Now I left PrEP to now I left PrEP till last because that has been a game changer in the HIV space. PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis is something high-risk individuals take before engaging in high-risk sexual activities to prevent the transmission of HIV. This drug is a game changer for not only Australia, but for the whole world. It is up to 86% real world effective. So what do I mean when I say real world effective? Well, we're humans, we all make mistakes. So when a drug says that it's this effective when it's taken perfectly, it's not that effective because I don't know about you, but no human I know is perfect. I mean, I'm pretty damn close, but... So this drug was added to our PBS in April 2018. What's the PBS? Well, the PBS is a scheme in Australia which subsidised really expensive drugs to make them cheaper so that they're accessible to more people. And PrEP was put on there in April of 2018. And since PrEP has been on there, it has been changing our transmission rates. Australia has free STI checks at your state's sexual health clinic. I know it's SHINE in South Australia and SHQ in WA. I'm not sure about the other states, but I will leave the links in the description. So if you need to get yourself checked, get checked, cause it's free. Woo. Go Australia. Okay, 
I'm going to be a downer for a minute, but let's hit numero tres. Safe schools. So, this was a positive sex ed change that did happen in my lifetime, and I am so hopeful that it will come back as a teacher, as a sex educator. Safe schools, I want you back. Please come back. So, safe schools, what is it? It was a federally funded program from 2014 to 2017, which aimed at creating positive and safe spaces for LGBTQI plus youth at, at Australian schools. I was just blown away that I could say that mouthful of a sentence so well. Every time I say LGBTQI plus, I stumble. I'm killing it. The program was intended to set a baseline of understanding about the matters impacting LGBTQI plus students in school. Basically, it was a safe haven for vulnerable youth. And apparently that was too much for conservatives and conservative media. I just want my gay babies to be safe and happy. So I'll link to some articles in the description if you are ready to subject yourself to that kind of hate. But summing it up, conservative media basically said that students were being forced to be genders that they weren't. Students were being forced to wear clothing that they didn't want to wear, like dresses, boys wearing dresses when they didn't want to wear dresses. And they were saying teachers were bullying students into pretending that they were gay, shaming them for being straight. I can tell you from personal experience as a teacher myself that none of that was true. I started teaching in 2016 and I got to have a look at the program and actually run some of the program and it's just it's just not true but alas after a lot of pressure the government caved and they defunded the program in 2017. Now following that they left it up to each state whether to, to decide whether they'd fund it and some states have chosen to par partially fund it. Western Australia is the only state that continues to fully fund the program the only thing that they've changed about it is the name because they couldn't keep the name. It is now called Inclusive Education WA. Victoria currently partially funds some of the program under the heading Building Respectful Relationships. The other states fund it a lot less or not at all. Even though it's not fully with us anymore, I still believe that even in, in its simplified form in each of the states, I still believe it's making some kind of positive change. And that's mainly why I left it in here. I also think we should celebrate that it was here for that little bit of time. Okay, last one. I know you all are sick of me rambling on. I know I am. So this one is a little small tiny win. Now the state of Tasmania, which is here. This little tiny island down here. No, not New Zealand. Here, yeah, New Zealanders are going to be so mad at me. This little tiny state has made a tiny, tiny change, but I hope this tiny, tiny change crashes over the mainland. As of April this year, in Tasmania, on your birth certificate, gender can be optional. Mic drop, Tasmania. Mic drop, mic drop. Obviously, if you've already been born, your gender is already on your birth certificate, but if you are older than 16 years of age, you can legally apply in Tasmania to have your gender removed from your birth certificate. If you're under the age of 16 years old, you need your parents' permission. If your parents approve, you can apply and the state will go through the approval process and you can have no gender or change your gender on your birth certificate. One of my favorite parts of this law as well is that you don't need to have surgery to change your birth certificate. You don't have to prove anything. I, now, in saying that, I haven't heard of anyone being successful, but as, as this video ages and as it stays on the internet, please leave a comment down below and let me know if you know. Okay, so we made it. Oh, my leg's going dead. Aha! That's it. That's all I've got to share. <laughs> Baby, that's not all I got to share. So there we have it. Four sex positive changes in Australia since 1992. If you have any more, whether you're from Australia or not, please, please add them down in the comments down below. I will be checking them. 
thank you for hanging out with me today. Until next time.